welcome to another wonderful episode of DFW Spotlight on Business. This is Heidi Hardy. I'm your host, and um, we have another fantastic show ready to go for you today. Uh, I have a um, a gentleman that I've met recently who is just amazing, um, Dr. Will Powers. Thank you for being here today. I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Yeah, yeah. So um, as many of um, our listeners and uh, know, I am out and about quite a bit and even on LinkedIn quite a bit. And that's where we met. Mm. We met on LinkedIn. So for those of you who think that LinkedIn isn't working anymore, it does work and it works really well here locally. So thank you again for being here. Mm. Well, you know, we have a couple of housekeeping things that we do at the beginning of every show. And so we want to make sure that everybody um, knows a little bit about me. I am, um, well, I don't know if I shared this before. So it might be news to some people. I was born in California. I know, I know. Texas people. <laughs> but I got here as soon as possible and uh, California, San Francisco Bay Area, which is beautiful and I, I sometimes miss. Um, but I am full Texan. I've been here many, many years and I have cowboy boots and a cowboy hat to prove it. So we're good. Um, I have three grown fantastic children and two grandsons. So that's um, another really awesome thing here in the DFW area. I'm able to enjoy my family. Um, and I think I've shared this before, but I won an, uh, an award for being the female host of the year in 2015. We also had a show called DFW, uh, real life DFW, and, uh, it was nominated for show of the year. So we've, I've been doing this for a little while, um, and just having fun. And that's what this is about <laughs> is having fun having fun. So welcome to the show today, guys. Um, the other part of this show is to to share with more than, you know, the one or two people that I get to talk to per, per day, but hundreds of people, thousands of people if possible, what it is that, um, it, that the DFW area uh, has that's unique and special about their business um, community. Uh, we do business in DFW and business is good for sure. Um, the other part, uh, there's there's a piece to this that is about what I do on a full-time basis. And uh, so my position is called a business performance advisor and I'm with a company called Insperity. Insperity is an HR, payroll and employee benefits, health benefits um, provider. What they do is amazing, but I think even more importantly, they they are small business advocates. And when I say small business, I mean the five to 150 uh, small business sizes and, uh, and that's employees. Um, because as businesses grow, oftentimes if you're not an HR specialist, if payroll is you know a pain in the rear, um, and if you're not offering employee benefits, and that's a big hullabaloo right now with, with all the um, uh, legislation going on, uh, but you need somebody to help you out there. And that's what Insperity does. It's, it's, so invite me over. I'm happy to sit down. Let's have a 30 minute conversation. I'll bring coffee, but let's talk about your business and how outsourcing some of those things that are really hard on those business owners can help you focus on other things like selling and and um, production and delivery and customer service and all those other things that you have to worry about. So that's a, a little bit about Insperity. And lastly, at the beginning of the show, we like to thank um, Real Life Media. And Real Life Media uh, sponsors the show, produces the show, and helps us um, get connected to our guests and then helps distribute the show um, on many different sites. Uh, so you can follow us on Facebook and we'll be able, you'll see them during the commercial breaks. Uh, but it's uh, DFW Spotlight on Business Facebook. Um, you can go to Twitter. It's Heidi underscore Hardy. Uh, YouTube is fantastic. I love YouTube. And you can, you can even just put DFW Spotlight. It pops up all of our videos. And uh, we have a great little archive of videos now and and uh, information uh, that's full of really cool people that I've had on the show and continue to have on the show. So again, welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, felt like that went fat by fast. <laughs> you did well. This is, thank you. Thank you. So let's get you roped into uh, what we're doing here and talk a little bit about um, your expertise, but the next segment is called DFW uh, Spotlight Business in the Know. One of the things that I like to do every week is uh, s sort of find a relevant topic 
that that relates to the guests that I have and their background and what they're going to talk about, but also, um, you know, what's going on in the last two or three years in the business community. This is a, it can be global. It's not necessarily specific to the DFW area, but it, I'm sure the DFW area has the same challenges uh, that some some companies um, or all companies have. So I found that this was very interesting. This is from a website called yourtrainingprovider.com and training new employees, um, the challenges and the solutions. So one of the things that we're going to talk about today is micro learning. That's correct. Yes, it is. Training people. Yeah. So the, there's four specific, and I, I think you have you know the information here. So there's four specific training employee challenges, and uh, the solutions I didn't list because I thought we'd engage you and and see what your thoughts were on some of these uh, listed challenges when you have employees and 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 how you you know, either get them up to speed or help them advance. Um, so the first one is keeping employees engaged. And so with your background, and I'll talk more about that with the, the audience, but with your background, what does that mean? Well, you don't want them wandering off and either in their mind or in their bodies. Uh, you want them working hard and, and doing what they're supposed to be doing. And in, uh, most cases, uh, working hard to find even better ways of doing things than what they've been doing in the past. Okay. I would agree with that. I think the, the other element there is to allow them some creativity and innovation, um, engaging their ideas, engaging some of the things that, um, you know, we have a whole new workforce coming up and they're called millennials. And then there's one big, you know, right at coming right after them. So, one of the things we know about them is that they do. They want to be engaged. They want to have um, an input. And um, so I would say that that's an equally important piece. Absolutely. And they, they want to feel appreciated as well. Abs yes. So engagement, appreciation, all of those things. And according to this article, it's a challenge. And I think part of that challenge from my perspective, and that's talking to many uh, small business owners is small business owners are very focused on and sometimes way in the weeds of the daily operations of the business. Mm -hmm. So actually stepping away and helping their employees to be engaged and noticing that they are or aren't sometimes is not um, the, at the top of the list of priorities, especially if payroll and <laughs> all those other top of the list things happen. Mm -hmm. True story. So the other one, uh, number two, is training employees who are not local. Is that a common challenge in, in your perspective? Uh, only slightly. It, there may be some cultural differences between where they have worked before and now where they're going to be working now. So there has to be an adjustment period there. Uh, uh, but being able to have multiple uh, outlets of your own company and then you want to train somebody in Michigan and somebody over in California and somebody here. Well, that's one of the real values of what's been developing lately in the training operation. And that's the internet. Yes. And the fact that now you can, you can have a, uh, a program that can reach those people in those different locations all at the same time and provide them with all with the same information. Right, right. Remote employees are, are an absolute challenge in many ways, but I think training is is a big one. I was I, I worked remote for almost 10 years. I loved it. It's awesome. Uh, <laughs> and I think it takes a special person to do that. So here's another one that we're going to talk about more together today, and that's inconsistent training materials. Are you finding that that's also a problem when you consult and you're out there? Well, there's a lot of people in the uh, training and educational business that have a different point of view of sometimes the most basic elements. Now, they're all trying to do the right thing from their point of view, but their education's been different or their cultural background has been different. And so it, they, <laughs> the training in one area at one uh, spot will produce dramatically different results than the same training produced in a different spot. Right. Well, 
Is it also the trainer? Does the trainer bring diversity to some of the training? Trainers can. Yeah. 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 So is I guess if if the materials inconsistent and the trainers a little are inconsistent then then there's a, there's some mixed messages in the training programs out there and that can be a challenge. And it's difficult to identify exactly what the value of that training has been. I I completely agree. This this episode is how micro learning can help how micro learning helps businesses today. And uh, and many of you may be saying, what is micro learning? Well, we're going to get into that, but this, it is a form of training. Um, and, and there's all kinds of back information that Will and I uh, have had many conversations about. And so it's, it's, it's very, very interesting. The last one on this list is successfully applying the training. And then that's again, what we're going to talk about today. But Talk to us about your opinion on that, the successful application of, let's say, tens of thousands of dollars spent on a three-day training. Well, unfortunately, uh, uh, training in, in the traditional mode, uh, a trainer, uh, first off, is an expert in that particular area. And the trainer thinks things are sometimes so simple Mm -hmm. I would agree. The reality is it's not simple to someone who has not had the same background. Sometimes it's even a language problem. Sure. They don't understand the language that the trainer is using. So uh, for that person to attempt to apply it in a meaningful, productive way becomes absolutely minimal. And that I would... I would say, so for those of you who have employees and then have a training budget and training programs, this is going to be extremely helpful because I would say that across the board, weighing that or or the ROI behind those training dollars, is it working? Are people, is, are people grasping? The, is it the right training? I guess, you know, many times there's questions. There's all of that. I think one of the real uh, critical things that, that organizational leaders should be doing is assuring that uh, continual improvement is a core value of the organization. Yes. So that uh, this person over here doesn't feel picked on because <laughs> they're, they're sent off to a training program or this group over here has a training program. This one didn't get it. No. If you make the core value continual improvement, that means everybody in the organization is going to have that in their job description. Right. They're going to have that in their evaluation forms. They're, uh, uh, they're going to feel accountable, which means the whole application of that training material is going to go on and people are going to continually improve. Very good. Well, there you go. Um, so this is um, the end of the segment uh, that we were just talking about. And, and basically, there are some challenges for companies. Um, sm small businesses, to me, I just have my heart. And some small businesses, I, I don't think 150 employees is small. I think that's going to, you know, a handful to, to f f as far as wrapping your arms around how to get the, tr the right training, uh, where those training dollars are, are being spent. And so uh, I appreciate your, your input on those. And then if you want more information on this article, you can go to www dot your training provider dot com slash blog so i i enjoyed it i thought it was a a helpful article and as a business owner a past business owner a business advisor these subjects come up almost every single time that i'm you know having these meaningful conversations with people so well let's do this i'm so excited i'm going to introduce dr will powers right now yeah and, and i okay so hello <laughs> There's like a book here. He has done a lot of really great things, and I'm excited that he's here with us because he's an expert in his field. And uh, so let me just read off a little bit. Um, he spent 45 years in academia as a professor, chair, and dean. Very, very very cool, and we'll talk more about that. Focus was on interpersonal and organizational communication. Published over 250 books, articles, and papers. Conducted many consulting and training programs in many organizations. And I really want to talk about some of those organizations that we talked about um, because they're big organizations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. NASA was one of them. 
uh, started tip of tip started tip a day training systems in the mid 1980s. So he's ahead of his time um, in the 80s, and uh, still this is very relevant and. Um, piece of what we're going to talk about today. Started 10 years of R&D with his key learning application system in 2003. Started con started Concept Keys Incorporated featuring the key learning application system in 2013. Um, and uh, so that, yeah, there's a, there's a humongous list of, of uh, uh, places that you've consulted in training, and, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about some of those. Um, but you have also let's let me let me do this. Let's talk about your education. Let's talk about that that journey where um, you started out as a um, a student, and then you've had a, a pretty impressive career in education and academia. Well, I've been very fortunate in my life. Uh, I was born in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, went. Family had a divorce, and, and then I remarried. And I went from Chicago, uh, and it was the inner city of Chicago, <laughs> to a steel mill town. And uh, I went through school there. Uh, parents didn't uh, wouldn't buy my textbooks. Back then, in high school, you had to buy them. So I had to steal the textbooks, but that was pretty easy. <laughs> uh, I was an athlete, uh, and uh, one day the uh, uh, football coach called the same play to the same other end uh, five times in a row, and he threw the ball to that other end. Well, after three times of that, I just kind of sloughed through it. And he caught me on the fourth one, and he just called a timeout, and he called everybody over. He says, Powers, you're better than that. When you let yourself off like that, you're letting everybody else off. We lose a game this year, it's going to be because you sloughed off, and you folks over here fouled him. Don't ever do that again. I didn't <laughs> of that type of thing, but then... Other things happen. I, I had a total of three people, the high school football coach, a drill instructor, and Marine Corps boot camp. I was simply late to a meeting, and he was so upset with that. He immediately called the entire platoon over. And he, Powers, you're better than that. When you're late and everybody else is expecting you to be there, one of these days they're going to die because you didn't show up and they stuck around. Don't ever be late for a meeting again. Wow. And it takes a while for to get me to be late for a meeting. Uh, <laughs> I was here today yeah, <laughs> an hour I'm, before this was supposed to start. I'm with you on, on promptness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then there was a college professor that uh, uh, I had a, an outstanding memory back in those days. And uh, I never bothered to take notes in classes. I just read the textbook and boom, it was there. Well, he, he called for a, uh, a midterm exam a week early. And in that midterm exam that he gave out, it had nothing but questions off of the materials that he covered in class. I failed it the uh -oh. first time I had ever failed an exam in my life. And he called me up in front of the entire class. <laughs> the There's thing. a theme here. Yeah. Power is your better than that. Not only does it count you, but you got to understand other people. How many folks here failed this exam? Three of you. Yeah. These are your best friends, aren't they, Powers? And I said, yeah. You see what happens? You can't slough off. You've got to do your best. And you're good, but you've got to be as good as you are good. Go for it. Yeah. That made a difference. And because of him, he came to me uh, three months later, and he said, oh, yeah, Powers, you're going to go on for graduate school. Fantastic. <laughs> I've already called a friend down in Oklahoma, and they're going to get you in there. And <coughs> It was really funny. Yeah. Yeah, so that's how it all started. I love that story. I love that story, and I think there are people in our lives who, who do step in, and, and whether it's a, a nice message or not, and, or in front of everyone, it's it's – you're better 
Um, so we are overdue for our first break. So let's go ahead and, and um, take our first break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk uh, more about uh, Dr. Powers and his uh, uh his career and his background. And then we're going to dig in deep into what is micro learning and how does it help your business. You're watching DFW Spotlight on Business. This is Heidi Hardy and we'll, we'll be right back. Hi, welcome to today's Biz Moment brought to you by Inspirity, inspiring business performance. Today's topic is employee engagement. It's a good thing. But a bad thing is bad management. We all know, boo. It's typically the root cause of employee engagement problems. Let's talk about what not to do, and then let's talk about how to fix it. Number one, you should not have erratic expectations. For example, don't wait until an employee has finished a project before asking them to redo the entire thing. Like, what a bummer, right? You can turn it around, though, by making your expectations known frequently always acknowledging any change in your expectations and being predictable, which sounds super boring in life, but in management, it's a good thing. Number two, showing favoritism. Of course, we like it when it's shown to us, but it's really not fair, and you know that already. It's when you treat similar behaviors from different employees with different responses. What you should be doing is being consistent with your reactions, the amount of information you share with everyone, and to be fair in all your interactions. And this is just sort of a metaphor for life. Just be fair. Don't show favoritism, especially if you're a parent, but that's another subject altogether. Number three, micromanaging. It's the monster in the room and we don't want anything to do with it. It's when you attempt to control every detail of an employee's work and it's the worst and you know it's the worst. Do not tell them how to dot their I's or cross their T's. They went to school, okay? Instead, Try to trust the judgment and work of your employees. That is why they are there. Let go of details that can be handled by others. It is totally liberating to just let it go. Number four, what not to do. Don't be unapproachable. It's not good for anybody. You can turn it around, however, because you can make sure there are plenty of interactions between direct managers and their teams. Of course, if that direct manager is you, that means you and your team. Because this is important, it's the number one driver of employee engagement according to certain studies. So science says it's the thing to do and you need to do it. Number five, burnout. Watch for anyone on the team that seems overworked or overwhelmed, even yourself. You can prevent it though. Leaders working manageable hours have employees that are more engaged and fulfilled. Encourage the use of vacation days, workplace perks, and try to avoid sending work-related emails after hours. I mean, no one wants to have to read their work emails when they're sitting on a beach in Cancun drinking a margarita. Am I right? I'm so right, and you know it. Stay tuned for more Insperity Biz Moments, business tips for savvy leaders. Welcome back. This is Heidi Hardy. You are tuned in to DFW Spotlight on Business, and we talk about business in DFW. And uh, a lot of what we do is we add information, education, and hopefully motivation to our business owners, our business professionals, um, our entrepreneurs, our thought leaders, the people that are out there just hustling every day. So uh, welcome, Dr. Will Powers. Thank you. Thank you for being here. We heard from him um, before the break, if you guys are just tuning in, and, and he had a great story about the three people in his life that really made a difference and helped him to, to excel. So when we talk about excelling, um, I, I think the thing that probably um, resonates on a local basis is you, you're, uh, you were a professor at TCU. Talk to us a little bit about that experience. That was uh, an outstandingly positive experience for me. Good. Uh, the students there were uh, functionally well-educated coming up. And uh, uh, the university as a whole uh, is dedicated to the education of those students in a quality manner. Uh, they... Uh, uh, many universities, <clears throat> uh, they actually support faculty doing a lot of outside work. Uh, 
mm-hmm. a second occupation, uh, doing consulting and training on the side, which is what I did for most of my academic career until I came to TCU, and they didn't uh, really support that at all. So I only wound up doing two consulting jobs uh, while I was uh, at TCU. I did NASA and I did Girl Scouts of America because I figured in the, the whole picture that, that TCU has that th- that would fit in well with their framework. Uh, and, uh, and it did, turned out very well. And TCU also was very alert to the fact that uh, education changes and we don't know it all uh, about uh, how the world works. So we have to continually do research in order to continually improve ourselves and learn more and more and more. Uh, And that's where the research uh, requirements come into play. I think that's part of what I love about our conversations is is we're really talking about um, human behavior and the research that you've done on that and how that relates to whether it's training or learning. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, obviously you've spent you know many years and and teaching and and um, and and consulting and helping, but tell us what is micro learning. And why is it important? Obviously, you were a little ahead of your time back back in the eighties. But <laughs> tell us what uh, you know what's going on today with micro learning. Well, the challenge is that uh, in their efforts to do the b- best quality job that they can, that the experts who are doing the training and educational efforts uh, are trying to put as much information as they can into a very limited time period. Right. Uh, and because of that, uh, frequently it just becomes an information overload situation right. where the human beings on the other end are trying to learn what they can, but our human capabilities of, as listeners uh, are, are relatively minimal. It's very difficult to keep the attention span uh, for more than 10 seconds. Especially these days. Especially if there's another noise going on or somebody is beating the table or looking over here or noise happens, a chair pops, you just go away. And then when it's information overload and uh, it just becomes too much for people to process in an effective way so that they, they understand it, they retain it, and they are able to productively utilize that information. Now, when micro-learning came into play, it would take that uh, information overload and they would take the important concepts in there and they'd break them down into the key fundamentals for each of those concepts. And then that becomes an element of micro-learning because they'll just deliver one small chunk of information. It only takes uh, the participant three to five minutes to process. Mm. So they're not involved in an eight eight hour seminar. Right. <laughs> it's a three to five minute time period. Now that is continued over a large number of times, but uh, it works, and it works much more effectively uh, than the traditional training model. Now the nice thing is that uh, trainers and teachers both have unique ways of of using micro learning. They can have a micro-learning system into place before they are ready to make their their lecture or their dynamic personal uh, involvement. Or they can have it to extend their programs after they've Mm. already given them that outstanding lecture. Sure. So it's up to them whichever way they want to go. Can they do both? Yes, they can. Okay. Now, that may be getting a a little bit overbearing on the part of the audience that you're dealing with. uh, it depends on the on the quality of the micro learning system that, that the person is using. Okay, so what I heard you say and what I understand micro learning to be is is taking a lot of information and dis- distributing it into small smaller bits of information, like three to five minutes of learning uh, or information, um, so that someone who may be overwhelmed with an eight-hour training can 
reinforce that, you know, I guess the basic uh, elements of the training that, that they were supposed to walk away with. Well, they can understand it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, understanding is a good <laughs> and thing. They can retain it because mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a smaller load. And they can see if it's, it's appropriate for them to pragmatically use in a productive way. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, let's talk about how that, uh, well, you know, one of the questions I had while I was listening to you is why you said it works. And I know that you've been doing this and you've done a lot of research on it and why it works. Tell us a little bit about, you know, the psychology behind, you know, why instead of this eight hour training, these micro learning sessions have become more effective. I think the NASA story was a good story in, in its um, context. Well, yeah, the, uh, this was back during the, the R&D period that we went through with our system. And uh, when they initially started, they were talking about uh, 100 or so of their engineers uh, and scientists going through my Listening Effectively program. And uh, what happened was uh, uh, the, the people there within NASA were talking about it a lot, and the various unique parts of it. And then <coughs> uh, they were talking, and some of the staff, staffing companies heard about it. And then they, they wanted to put their scientists and engineers through it. It sounds amazing, but the final total was 703. Wow. Scientists yeah. and engineers, in some way associated with NASA, not all in there, but in the staffing companies as well, and uh, that went very, very nicely. At the same time, we had uh, 15 ESL employees uh, from another uh, organization, and they went through it. Now, they loved it because the material that in there was written at a sixth grade readability level. The scientists and engineers liked it because it only took them five minutes a day. Right. <laughs> and the leaders in both categories liked it because they began to see small improvements in many people on listening more effectively. Right. Really remarkable. Yeah. And uh, Do you find – so I know that you, you, you specialize in the, the communication side of training and teaching. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um. That's a quagmire to me. <laughs> I, I think if, if you ask 10 corporations, what's your biggest challenge? I think communication would be right up there. Maybe number one. If you asked um, a business with five employees, what's your biggest challenge? I believe communication would be right up there, if not number one. So talk to me about um, your research on the human behavior and why communication is so difficult. We have one minute, so to get, to just give us a little tease because we're going to go to our next break and then we're going to dig into that. Well, the, the whole communication system, we're using these things we call words. And my idea of what I have in my head, and I use a word, I, or three words, I love you, goes out. And then you understand what I'm doing. I'm saying I really like you a lot. But this person over here thinks all of a sudden I said I love you, like I'm in love with you and I want to do some crazy lovable things with you. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's the downside of human communication is because we have people – if we had 10 people in here, we could take a word like uh, abominable and ask them what that means. And we would probably get 10 different interpretations of it. So part of what we have to do, and that's one of the real values of the micro-learning system, is there's a certain element of redundancy that's built in here mm -hmm. uh, that has a person looking at the same information over and over and over again. And if the organization is setting it up to have a team-building sort of model underneath it all, they're going to be interacting with their colleagues and their friends about it and learning even more, getting more collective in their idea of what really was intended to be uh, communicated. All right. Well, you are the uh, founder and president of Concept Keys Incorporated, which is the system that we're about to talk about after this next break. And um, specifically, it is a micro learning system that you've created. And it is your it's your it's your business. 
You're yes. a business owner. Yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back after this break and uh, we're going to talk to Dr. Powers uh, more about communication. But also from that micro learning standpoint, we're going to find out more information of how, you know, how he's using it, how he's presenting, how companies are using it and what we can do to get our hands on um, this, this learning tool. You're watching DFW Spotlight on Business. This is Heidi Hardy and we'll be right back. Hi, welcome to today's Biz Moment, brought to you by Inspirity, inspiring business performance. Today's topic, employee development plans. The key to success from a manager's point of view is proper planning, clear direction, and the end result is a win-win. Yay! Who doesn't like it when everyone wins? Here are some questions to ask before you get started. And the first is, what are your business goals? Think about both long and short-term objectives. Write them down even if you need a pen and paper, sometimes that's the best way to do it, and then figure out what skills or knowledge your employees would need to meet those goals. Number two, what are your employees' goals? That's kind of important to know, right? Meet with each team member face-to-face. -face. There's nothing like old-fashioned communication. Ask them about their career goals. Would they even be open to learning new skills? Number three, how do you determine which skills your employees need help learning? By making sure they're SMART. And SMART is in all capital letters because S stands for specific, M stands for measurable, A, attainable, R, relevant, T, timely. Don't you just love a good acronym? Number four, how do you put this into action? Consider all the possibilities for helping your employees acquire these new skills. Will that be in the form of formal training? Will it be reading, working with experts, one-on-one -on -one coaching and mentoring? Once you've figured out the learning channels, finalize the plan with a schedule or timeline. You, you don't want this to go on forever, right? Number five, how will you apply these new skills in the actual workplace? Well, I'll tell you. Set up as many opportunities as possible for employees to apply the new skills to their job. There's no time like the present, especially when that knowledge is nice and fresh. Stay tuned for more Insperity Biz Moments, business tips for savvy leaders. Welcome back. This is Heidi Hardy, and uh, you're listening to DFW Spotlight on Business. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for watching this um, in an on-demand episode. I really enjoy the on-demand episodes. Uh, I've gone back a couple times and and watched some of the guests that have been here, and it's just uh, it's amazing how much they share, and their knowledge has um, an impact in our DFW business community. So. Again, thank you. Dr. Will Powers is with us today. He is the founder and president of Concept Keys Incorporated. If you're just checking in with us, we are talking about uh, a learning program, um, micro learning. And uh, the way that Dr. Powers broke it down earlier is uh, we go through these training programs and sometimes it's eight hours sometimes it's two days sometimes it's three days depending on what the program is and how important the program is um, what dr powers has been able to do is take that program and then also provide small bites of information throughout a period of time three to five minutes of information where it it validates and affirms what they learned or maybe heard the first time. And that helps to make sure that um, the people who are taking this training are, are truly benefiting in some some way with the training. Is that correct? Yes. Did I translate so. that pretty good? Mm -hmm. So we're back. Let's talk about concept keys and um, you know how that works for, for companies. Yeah. Uh, the key learning application system uh, is indeed different than other learning management systems that are out there. Uh, we have a number of factors that are built into it. So let me just describe for you how it would work. If you were a participant in this program, uh, say it's one on communicating clearly, uh, you and your colleagues would all be getting the same information at the same time. Uh, you'll be uh, getting one key to success in that area uh, every day. And it'll start out with a gentle reminder email every day. 
comes in and says, Hi, Charlie, Sue. Uh, key number 14 is waiting for you. Click right here. And it clicks and it takes you right to your own account at the website. And there, the key to success is there, followed by a brief micro lesson and typically three to five food for thought questions that are predominantly clickables. And there it is. So you've gone through that with those questions. You've gone through that material roughly two to three times. And you've been able to do this in less than five minutes. And then, well, then it becomes a part of your email opening process that we all tend to do first thing in the morning when we get into work. And so then conversations with other people about that particular key <laughs> can pop in. Okay. So then every five keys, uh, we'll say it's five days in a week, uh, it'll come in and they'll say, okay, uh, can you recognize the five keys you just got last week? And they are randomly embedded with 15 other keys drawn from the world of keys. Yes, so you, you can't get, cheat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, and they can't cheat basically uh, from one to the other anyway, because uh, every person in the room there, if you're in a computer room, will all be getting different polls <laughs> right. in terms of what the uh, other 15 magical keys are. Well, that'll happen every five keys as it goes through. The other thing that happens is it'll pop up and it'll say, okay, here are the five keys you got last week. Which one's most important for you? Good. What are you going to do to apply this better next week or to get better at it? Good idea. And that goes on in every five keys, regardless of what the content coverage is, the programs, the system remains the same. Uh, and it works because the redundancy there that's built in, they hear that, they read that process over and over and over and over and over again, but they don't do it in a crowded, impacted sort of way. They're doing it a little bit at a time. And it just takes them five minutes or so. The uh, the four booklets that I wrote is what started this whole thing. And uh, you can see the booklets right there. Yeah, they're right out here. Yeah. And the most popular one has been listening effectively. And I hired my best graduate student uh, to uh, sell these when I was up at a different university. And uh, he sold almost 400 of these wow. in a what matter a of three months. Wow. For 10 bucks a book. And I said, how in the world did you do that? <laughs> he says, well, what I would do is I would get in to talk to some of the leaders and I'd say, just to show you how important this is, let me do this for you. Okay, just tell me when to stop. Go ahead, tell me when to stop. Stop. Okay. Tip number 11. Control your feelings about the speaker to listen more effectively. Okay. Who do you know that needs this one? <laughs> <laughs> and that's how he would sell it because inevitably that person would know and be able to identify sometimes three and four and five people that would uh, really should control their feelings about me when I come in there. <laughs> right, right, right. And talk to them. And it works that way regardless of what the uh, element is. There's there's repetition, but it's... it's uh, it's not an overwhelmingly negative sort of repetition model. It's different as things go on. Well, I do want to share that I, I took a course. And it is remarkable. What, what was remarkable to me, it was about networking, which, which is a great course. Um, because many people, I don't know that they, if you haven't been professionally networking for a while, it is confusing and it can be, um, it, it, it just can be something that overwhelms people uh, mentally and emotionally. So what I found about the keys was when I got that email, and this was good, when I got that email, I, I, you know, I'm busy, I'm going, I'm driving, I'm all over the place, but an email pops up and I see it. 
like, oh, that's right. I got to, you know, I need to, I need to do this. So then I take a minute, I do it. And it is broken down in a way that you, you, you have to stop and think about it. You can't just click through and click through and then, you know, move on with your next your next activity. And the other part that I really appreciated was the part that it said at the bottom, well, how are you going to use this? How, you know, what are you going to do? Because it holds the person mm -hmm. accountable for what their actions are going to be for what they learned. Now, in my case, I wasn't, you know, my, my boss wasn't asking me to do it. I wasn't really under the gun. And so um, I had to hold myself personally accountable. But in the case of having employees or uh, being a big corporation like Boys and Girls Club or or NASA, um, you have managers that can, can sort of stand behind this and say, you know, I, I know you finished three keys. I saw it. Um, I'm not going to you know, ask you too much about it, but what did you do this week? And just get them to take accountability for the learning process. Absolutely. In fact, that's how we describe uh, the key learning application system. It's micro learning with gentle accountability. Right. Because they're constantly reminded that their boss has access to their activity right. in this program. And uh, for example, part of it is uh, we... Uh, we know exactly when we sent you that gentle reminder email, and we know when you actually came in to work on the material. And we give you 18 hours. If you come in that time, then you are actively involved in getting better with this. However, if you wait until Friday and you come in and you do all five of them in five minutes, <laughs> Not and, the same. Yeah, not, not the quite same. the same. No. You're just blowing this thing off. And we know it, and so does your leader. And if the organization is, is approaching this appropriately, it's going to be handled in an appropriate sort of way. One of the things that we do is we provide this uh, to uh, every uh, owner of a program. And... Uh, this is a compilation of the 45 years that I spent doing consulting and training. Yes. Uh, and it's filled with suggestions. And uh, it has over 50 different activities that they can have the workers doing it. And, and uh, everything in there has worked somewhere. Nothing in there has worked everywhere. You've got to adjust to the culture the environment, the context within which it's being done. and That's a great point. I'm sorry to interrupt you because we were talking about that on the break and you said this is about culture. It's about um, the, the, the company's mindset about this. Before, because we probably have about five more minutes, five or six more minutes. Before we run out of time, what did you mean by that? The organization has to understand that not just its leaders, but the organization is made up of human beings. Sure. And, and the organization uh, is impacting how human beings are going to behave and act uh, within their system and whether they're going to get better and get better and get better. Uh, or if they're just going to blow this off. And uh, I became famous for a short period of time uh, with Power's Jerk Factor. Okay. <laughs> uh, my belief was that 15% of the people in this world are jerks. Now, for me, that means that they're in it for themselves and themselves only. They don't care about anybody else. They don't give a hoot in any way about anybody else. It's just me, me, me. And about when I'm doing this in a presentation, uh, inevitably somebody out here will raise their hand and they'll be going, oh, higher, higher, higher. <laughs> higher than 15%. Yeah, okay. so I'm <laughs> Another 15% act like jerks sometimes because they get caught up. The jerks can catch people and bring them in. And before you know it, they're all talking and complaining about that stupid boss they've got. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, well, the good news is that you got another... Uh, 40 to 50 percent of people that are okay folks. Uh, they're willing to do and want to do exactly what they're supposed to do and they want to do it as good as they can. Uh, and then you've got another 15 percent that are heroes. You have an emergency situation come up. You say, hey, can you come in this weekend? I, 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 we need, need to get, we need to get this thing out on Monday. 
Yeah, sure, heck yeah, no problem. Those are the heroes. And you got to understand that when you're trying to put together a system. You, you know, you run across a jerk. That doesn't mean that everybody out here is a jerk. It just right. means you happen to run across a, a jerk that really wasn't a good jerk because a good jerk can hide. <laughs> and they appear to be uh, okay folks. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but they're really right. not. Right. Well, when you realize that and understand that, then how you go about uh, supporting uh, continual improvement is by allowing the workforce to determine that. So you give them something like I give here where they've got all these different ideas and crazy things. But, and this group over here in, in this department would say, I wouldn't do those if my life depended on it. And this one over here said, hey, this is the best thing that we could possibly do. And you let that go because you're looking for continual improvement. But when this department wants to continually improve in a certain way, that doesn't mean that this department wants to do the same thing. It's got its own different continual improvement areas. Right. So you have to be able to adjust to that as you go through it. One of the nice things is to get a little bit of ex uh, exposure to uh, any of the systems before you decide which one is right for you, like you did with, with yeah, this. Absolutely. Well, I, you know, one of the things, and again, I don't want to um, run out of time, but I believe that many corporations have it in them that they do want to improve their employees. I mean, they some of them put a lot of money into it. Some of them put a lot of time and thought. Um, and there's also the small to medium sized business owner who really understands it, that sees that that you know, 15% mm -hmm. jerks and 15% heroes, and then all the in between. And that, you know, they're they're trying to wrap their minds around. Well, how do I get everybody to talk to each other and it be a you know a a, a productive opportunity um, to set a culture? Of learning and right. communication, right. Um, so you know, one of my, I guess, uh, uh, focuses has been on leadership, and we we do have about a minute. Leadership is, in my opinion, a uh, is probably the most important piece when it comes to ongoing learning. Yet I, in my experience, in some leadership situations, uh, it's also, uh, it, it looks as if leadership isn't, you know, isn't as engaged with the learning. It's, you know, mm -hmm. let, let those guys learn. I'm, I'm busy. I, I've got to, I've got to do some, some other things. Is that, and is that's that exactly why having that core value, okay. everybody is to be continually improving. Okay. And leaders are right in there. The head dog has to be continually improving as well. And it needs to be that way all the way out. Now, if people who have been watching this would like to experience something uh, Absolutely. That before that. Uh, you get involved, uh, go to our website, conceptkeys.com, and look at the public programs. There's 14 of them there. And... Uh, Identify one that you'd like to explore a little bit. Send me an email. Let me know which one you like to explore. And I'll set you up with a free demo of the first five keys of success in that particular program, in that particular area. And you'll be getting one a day, just so like a normal participant would be getting, so you can get a feeling for how it works like that. Yeah. And it won't cost you anything, and, and we don't... Uh, Fumble bumble around <laughs> like so many other companies do. Uh, there's nothing funny about this at all. No, it's 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 a it, this research that you've done, everything uh, everything that you've written and and created is an amazing um, um, uh, collection of information that that doesn't change that much. When we talk about communication we talk about um, human behavior and 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 all the personalities and things it is uh you know the more information the more research that has been done the more the better we get so i really appreciate you being here but again before we get too far into um, the closing part of the show to, what is it that concept keys is trying to accomplish moving forward what's the future of concept keys well in the same way that i had three people that stopped and helped me to lead a better life. I want to be able to do the same thing for as many people as I can before I get too old to appreciate and enjoy it. Uh, and I want to be able to have a system here uh, that 
can expand, can uh, uh, can help that many people in the internet. We can help thousands and tens of thousands of people simultaneously. Uh, so we're looking for a, a larger strategic alliance or partner or investor uh, who, uh, who has experience with the two major markets that we have, the workforce development market and the education market. Those two together, uh, the markets are, uh, are bouncing in around uh, $80 billion a year in there in terms of developing this workforce and developing younger people and educational model. Uh, so the money can be had, it's there, but it takes the talent and the uh, expertise to be able to carry it out. And that's what we need to acquire by targeting people who dealt at that level. Yeah. And I would say um, I have considerable uh, I have a, a, a wonderful network and some. Uh, many of them are coaches. Many of them are teachers or trainers. Um, this is a, a, an opportunity for them to use the content that you've created and, um, and create a micro-learning system for their content. So there are different ways that Dr. Powers uh, can and will work with um, people. But at the end of the day, growing the business, um, expanding the business, and growing this micro-learning into and pushing it into um, more uh, more organizations mm -hmm. and institutions, uh, hopefully, like you said, will help the, mo the most people possible. One final thought is that anybody out here can write your own content on my system. It's called a private label system, and we have many, many people that are using this in sometimes very unusual ways, but many of them are using it very productively because uh, you have to go far beyond what our 14 public programs are and look at hundreds of private label programs. That are, and, and you get the copyright on it, you market it, you sell it for whatever you want, and then you purchase it, the seats from me at wholesale prices. So it's very simple, very easy, and less expensive. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So something to consider um, for anyone who has a business that and they want to um, grow and expand their business through the Concept Keys, please contact Dr. Powers. Um, also, uh, something to consider if you are a coach or a trainer and, and you just want to make sure that those people that you coach and train get a reinforced program so they don't forget you. Right. Um, so thank you again for being here, Dr. Powers. We really appreciate you. Um, next week's show is about recycling and I can't wait. And um, uh, thought for the week is live as if you were to die tomorrow. Learn as if you were to live forever. And that's by uh, Mah Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, again, thank you for watching and being with us. And don't forget to live your real life passionately. Bye. Don't be late. <laughs>